does the scouter say about his power level? Um, I don't know. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. This video is an updated version of a series of videos I did a long while ago where I looked at converting attack potency and speed into the Dragon Ball power levels. That video is incredibly out of date, so much so that between me making this video and the last one, Seth the programmer has made his own video and using it for like crossverse and Naruto scaling as well. So I want to make an updated version of my own because I disagree with some of the stuff Seth did. And really, because my old one's so outdated, it really needs to be refreshed. So we must have a continuous model. The feats being used must be impressive. There must be a known power level. And we will allow for anime adaptation for something like the time frame of a feat. Purely because it's kind of hard to show a time frame with manga feats. The accepted power levels I'll be using in this video are ones that are consistent across different guides, such as the Daisenshu and the Super Exciting Guide. Also, I'll be using power levels that are shown in the manga as direct source material as well. At the very start of Dragon Ball, Yamcha was able to hit Goku through four different pillars, and then all the pillars were able to collapse on Goku. This has 200 million joules of energy, or small building level, and Goku survived this at a power level of 10. Jackie Chan was able to destroy the moon with energy of 1.84 times 10 to the 33 joules, or planet level, and did this with a power level of 139. Did you know, if you hit the moon with exactly moon-busting energy, it would take 12 minutes and 10 seconds to explode? This is why Roshi and many other fictional moonbusters are most likely stronger than you think. For power levels 10 to 139, we get two following equations. One converting power level to energy, and one converting energy to power level. For the sake of this video, we will only need the equation converting energy to power level. Piccolo was able to destroy the moon at a relativistic speed with a power level of 322. This gives him energy of 8.9 times 10 to 34 joules, or large planetary. This means for power levels of 139 to 322, we would have the following two equations. And this would then mean that we'd use this equation to convert power level to energy. Vegeta has his own feat, a large planetary, when he created a false moon. The kinetic energy to throw something with the mass of a moon into the moon's position in only 14 seconds will result in 2.77 times 10 to the 37 joules for a large planetary, and he did this with a power level of 18,000. This would mean that power levels from 322 to 18,000 would have the following two equations, and this is the equation that would be used convert energy into power level. Now, you may be wondering, what about the Kaioken that seems to multiply abilities in a linear fashion? This is a misconception based on how the Kaioken works. The Kaioken multiplies your power level by whatever you use it for, so Kaioken times 2 will double your power level, Kaioken times 3 will triple your power level, and in terms of how it relates to your physical stats being AP and speed, they would increase by the same amount as the power level, which in the perception of the characters inside the show would appear linear, but in reality, it's not. However, I do believe that the introduction of Kaioken is the part of the series where power levels have to change at the same rate. They don't have to be exponential, they don't have to be changing or linear, what they have to be is the same. Whatever rate it is, it must be the same. Because of such, this next quantification for how power levels change are based on something that's independent from power levels and we'll be doing a direct comparison. So comparing the size of the power ball, which is Vegeta using his key control to make a false moon in his hand, and comparing it with the size of the Namek spirit bomb, 
something in the manga shown to be far larger, almost comparable to a planet in its own size, we can quantify the difference in the power level increase at this point in the series. We can get the volume of the power ball by comparing Vegeta's height to the width of his head and the width of his head to the power ball itself. Doing this, we get a volume of 0.005 cubic meters. Scaling the size of the spirit bomb to planet dynamic itself and using a chopped off cone volume, we can determine what its volume actually is. Doing so, we get 4 quadrillion cubic meters. By comparing these two volumes and comparing their power levels of 120 million and 18,000, we'd get the following power level equation. This would conclude all the power levels that would be about attack potency. This would conclude all the power levels that would be about attack potency. Now converting combat speed to power level, Goku at a power level of 10 was able to move so fast he left several after images while jumping over this one henchman. This would be at 1300 meters per second or supersonic plus. For this next one is Goku at a power level of 180. This isn't one feat but a series of feats he does, all of which are around the speed of light. Would it be him jumping from the ground and grabbing the four star Dragon Ball before it can split off all the way around the world? or if he's blitzing the solar flare mid-fight with TM. From Commander Black's mech suit. In the anime, these blasts from Commander Red are actually very consistent and Goku dodges all of them, all being the speed of light, because they're lasers. So this would mean at a power level 180, it is very consistent for them to be the speed of light. This would mean for power levels 10 to 180, we'd get the following equations. Would be the equation to convert combat speed into power level. Now this next feat is one that many people seem to forget about. You see, the Saiyan pods coming in the Saiyan saga took one year to travel what is presumed to be the other side of the universe. It's the highest time frame we've ever heard for a Saiyan pod traveling. It took Vegeta's Saiyan pod at the end of the Saiyan saga 37 days to reach planet Namek making planet dynamic about one-tenth the radius of the universe away from Earth, which makes sense considering it's in a different galactic quadrant. Now, despite this enormous distance, the Namekian Dragon Balls could travel from Namek to Earth in the small time frame of two minutes. Goku has upscaling from the Namekian Dragon Balls, being able to deny their wishes if you so choose. Therefore, Goku would scale to the speed at 1.2 quadrillion times the speed of light. This would mean you get the following equations from a power level of 180 to a power level of 150 million for speed. And this is the equation you'd get converting the speed into power level. The power level of speed and the power level of attack potency together in a meaningful way we use what is called the exponential average. How this works is the following formula and to give an example if we have an attack potency power level of 100 and a speed potency power level of 1000 we can use this exponential average as shown and it'd be 316. This balances the difference in attack potency and speed, but allows for both attack potency and speed to be uniquely identifiable within the power level itself. Now that I have several equations converting both combat speed and attack potency into power level, and I have a way of converting the combined levels of attack potency and combat speed into a singular power level, I can use some cross-verse examination on other series that I like. Examples being Hunter x Hunter, the Infamous series, One Punch Man, and several others. Let's take this one step further. About one year after starting my channel, 
I decided to make a battle simulator that would simulate characters who I had scaled battling each other. This was very poorly made and very poorly thought out. However, using the power level system, I believe I can get a much more fair battle simulator and I now am better at coding so that I can make it more presentable in videos. My next video will be going over how I create this battle simulator. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos, a recommended video as well as the last video on the channel. A nice fun one going over the strongest mod in Gary's mod. So this means I'll be having a new series going over the power level of different fictional characters. Be kind of like the how strong is. Except from now I'll be adding them all to this battle simulator I'll be working over time. And the next video will be going over how I build this battle simulator. So you have some idea why it's going to take such a long time. Thank you for watching, have a good day.